If you're a believer, a Christian, you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, but yet you still find yourself struggling with sin in some area of your life, the first thing that you need to do is to turn to God and to repent. 1 John 1, 9 says that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. No matter what sin it is, he will cleanse you from that sin. He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And to go even further, if you read Psalms 103, verse 12, it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far he's removed our transgressions from us. Some people may ask and read that verse and say, well, what does that mean? I, I don't understand that. Well, if you take a globe, if you take a globe, and I'm in the United States, so if I take this globe and I just travel east, and I, I can go around this globe 50 times, 100 times, a million times, a billion times, I can go around the globe east as many times as I want, and I am never going west. Never. That is how far God has removed your sins, your transgressions from you. He does not want them returning again. He is casting them away from you. And if you read Micah 7, 19, it says that he subdues our iniquities and that he casts all of our sins, all of our sins, not some of them, no, he casts all of our sins into the depths of the sea. He wants to remove them from us. Why? Because it's sin that separates us from him. He wants to be in fellowship with us. He wants to protect us. He wants to provide for us. He wants to bless us. But he can't do that when we're in sin because we're separating ourselves from him. That's what Isaiah 59 2 says. So to keep that fellowship there, he removes our sins from us as we repent. But unfortunately, a lot of Christians are getting on fishing boats and going out into the depths of the sea and they're casting their lines. They're trying to pull their sins back. They don't want to let them go. You need to let them go. When you repent, your sins are gone in God's eyes. They are covered under the blood of Jesus, never to return again in Jesus' name if you so choose to walk there. And that's where it comes into play. You have the choice to, to walk in righteousness or not walk in righteousness, to, to remove those sins, to leave them in the depths of the sea, or to pick them back up again. God is not going to hold those sins over your head. He does not do that. If you read 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter, verse 5, it says that love keeps no record of wrongs. We know, according to 1 John 4, 8, that God is love. So if God is love, he must display all the characteristics that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13 on what love is. So God keeps no record of wrongs. So God, God's not up in heaven with his you know, record of wrongs saying, Yep, Susie, on Monday at 12 p.m., she displayed anger. On Tuesday at 5 p.m., she displayed unforgiveness towards her mother. On Wednesday, she... God's not doing that. He is not doing that. God is so holy that he can't even look upon sin. He can't be in the midst of sin. So, one, God's not going to keep a record of wrongs. But two, when you are in sin, you're separating yourself from him. So what God knows is you're in sin because he has no fellowship with you at that time. He's not keeping a track of what you've done, but he knows that you've separated yourself from him. However, once you repent, once you turn back to him, that's gone, that's covered under the blood in Jesus' name, and now that fellowship is restored because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. So it's important for us that we do the same thing. We do not keep a record of wrongs with, with our loved ones, with our family members, our parents, our children, our brothers, sisters, aunts, cousins, uncles, our teachers, our friends, everyone. Don't keep a record of wrongs. That's what love does. It forgives. But that's what we have to do with ourselves also. So that's the next step. After you repent, after you turn to God, you repent. God will forgive you. He'll remove your sins from you. As far as the east is from the west, cast them into the, the depths of the sea. Now what you have to do is forgive yourself. Satan tries to bring condemnation upon us as Christians. He tries to say that we're not worthy enough, that, that look at what you did in the past. Romans 8.1 says, there is, there, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Okay, There's a big key there. We've got to be walking according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. 
That's where there is no condemnation. God wants us walking according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. Satan wants to keep us in the flesh where there's that condemnation. I'm going to stay in the flesh and I'm going to remember everything that I did yesterday and the day before. Even though I've repented for those things, I'm going to let Satan hold them over my head so that I can walk in condemnation. God doesn't want you there. And to get out of there, you have to forgive yourself. You have to realize what happened there. Satan is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. He is trying to destroy your life and he is trying to destroy the plan that God has for your life. Put the blame where the blame belongs. Yes, you chose to sin. Satan was trying to tempt you to get you off of God's plan. Forgive yourself and say, no, I'm not going to go there again. That's what true repentance is. True repentance is turning from that sin and not going back there. And that's where you've got to forgive yourself and then you've got to press forward. Philippians 3.14 says that I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And that's what we have to do. We have to be forward looking. We cannot be looking behind. Jesus himself said in Luke 9.62 that no one, no one who puts their hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We have got to be focused on what God is calling us to do ahead forward-looking, not behind. What, what's behind what you did yesterday, what you did last year, what you did 10 years ago is in the past. You can't change that. What you can change is right now and the choices that you make today. And that's what you have to focus on. I'm going to walk in righteousness today. I'm going to do the Word of God. I'm going to live according to the Word of God. And as you do that, now you're going to be in that righteous, righteous state. You're going to be walking with God in fellowship with Him. And that's where God wants us to be. That is, again, where his protection is. That's where his provision, his blessing, all of those things are. That's where his leading is. But you've got to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself of those things. You know, if you want to move on to the next chapter in your life, you've got to stop rereading the last one. You know, that's a famous quote. If you're rereading the last chapter, you're never going to move on to the next one. Forgive yourself. It's the enemy that wants to condemn you. It's the enemy that wants to keep bringing your past into the present. Your past is in the past. Live in the present. Live in the present. If you've got your hand to the plow, I'm going to do God's work. Stop looking back. You can't change that. What you can do is say, I am going to make righteous decisions moving forward. And the only way that we can really truly do that is to be in the Word of God. You've got to be in the Word of God. You've got to be doing the Word of God. And as you do that, we, t we talked earlier that it's the enemy that tries to tempt you and get you off the path. And, and it's through your own choices that you get off the path. But 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says that God will, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear it. But with that temptation, he will provide the way of escape. There is one way of escape when temptation comes in, and it is the word of God. It is by turning to God and doing it God's way. So it's very important that if you have an area in your life that, that you found yourself yielding to temptation, that you find scriptures in that area, whether it be lust, whether it be anger, whether it be unforgiveness. Memorize those scriptures. Write yourself affirmations and affirm yourself every morning. I will not do this. I will do this. And, and quote the word of God. Memorize the word of God. And then as the enemy comes in like a flood, Isaiah 59, 19, the Lord raises a standard up against him, and that standard is the word. That is the way of escape. So memorize those words, memorize those scriptures in those key areas that you're struggling with and declare, I'm not going to struggle with this anymore. And any time that the enemy comes in, quote that scripture. In Jesus' name, enemy, you must be gone. I am not going to yield to this temptation. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. You know, I will not yield to anger. I will not yield to lust. I will not do this. I will walk righteously with my God. The word is your way of escape. So turn to God. Repent. Repent from your sins. God will forgive you. Then forgive yourself and then press forward. Be forward looking. Don't turn back. You know, there's a reason that when you're driving a car that the windshield Look how big the windshield is and look how small that rear view mirror is. God does not want you looking back. He wants you looking forward. And God himself is the same way with us. He does not look at us according to what we've done in our past. He looks at us according to what we can do in the future. If we yield to his plan for our life and fulfill what he has paved out before us, he's got great and mighty plans for you. And that's what he's looking at you upon. 
because he believes the best and he believes that you're going to fulfill those plans. He doesn't believe based on what you've done yesterday or two weeks ago or a month ago. No, he believes based upon the plan that he has for you because he believes the best. That's what love is. And he looks at you according to that. And that's how you need to see yourself according to what God has planned for you because that's how God sees you. So change your image of, on how you see yourself. Don't view yourself as this sinner, this person that has just done all these awful things. No, look at yourself upon God's plan for your life going forward. Change your outlook. Forgive yourself. Get rid of that condemnation. Walk in the Spirit and not according to the flesh.